Multiple streams of income for old rope. Sharon Horn from here. Welcome to day 1,559 of what you up to now, documenting the journey, this transition from brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business, and then back and forth a little bit. Sharing the business journey primarily, but sometimes I talk about other topics as well. So today in our annual challenge, the BU 365 day challenge, you do one thing every day that improves us. We are talking about multiple streams of income, different types of income, and then ways to create different flows of income into our life. Why? Because things like the COVID pandemic come up and all of a sudden our primary stream of income can be cut off and shut down. You know, things outside of our control happen and all of a sudden our business doesn't exist anymore. I heard something really alarming yesterday that in the last month, 16 different food processing businesses have either burned down, been hit by planes or something's happened to them. And I just think it's it's fascinating since that's an industry I was intimately involved in for you know over three and a half decades to uh, see that some of those things are happening. And there's some, some belief that it might be due to terrorism to limit the food supply to cause more inflation and more panic in America. Like we don't have enough fear and interesting craziness going on. We need to have ways of, of, of more of it being uh, spread throughout the country. It's, it's just kind of mind boggling to me. So we're talking about multiple streams of income, which is an example of COVID and then you know, terrorism, which we never thought was a huge deal before, but obviously is a huge threat right now. Apparently riots took out thousands of businesses in the Minneapolis area alone. Not sure how many they took out countrywide from the George Floyd, Floyd riots in, in 2020. So uh, a lot of craziness going on at, in America that I think a lot of us that are older would never have anticipated or expected things to be happening like this in our country. This is my, uh, I guess, opinion being shared that it's not even on topic today, but it's, it's obviously on my mind because it came out of my mouth. So our idiom to kind of go along with this, our financial idiom, we're focusing on financial well-being for the challenge this month was money for old rope. Now, this is one of those idioms and expressions I've never heard in my life and I've never heard of. And so I didn't even know what it meant. And as I was researching to find out what it meant, it's one of those idioms that has a whole lot of folklore behind it, but none of it based in fact or reality. There's a lot of folklore saying that uh, widows and and children were kept in workhouses where they would tear apart old ropes to be used as caulk on sailing ships. Now, it turns out that there's absolutely no truth or connection to that story, but it makes for a good story, right? Wow, that's a lot more interesting than just thinking that it means easy money, and it came from the British Army from World War One and became popular because a gentleman by the name of James Curtis used it in his book, Guilt Kids, in 1936, and it, it became popular in the 1930s then on. Now, again, here in the United States, I have personally never been exposed to and never heard that term. So it was a new one for me. But I certainly understand the concept of easy money. And that definitely ties into multiple streams of income. A lot of streams of income that we want to acquire and, and get to work for us in our lives are passive streams of income. Active versus passive income. Uh, you may be probably familiar with active income. It means I do something. I trade my time for money. I put forth effort and I get money in return. Uh, businesses are generally considered a passive stream of income at the profit point, right? The profits from your business are considered passive income, which are taxed differently, of course. We're not even gonna get into that. Then active streams of income, right? Then trading your time for money, having a job is considered active source of income. So we talked about probably 20, 25 different, at least 25 different possible passive or not 18 of them were passive but uh some of those i argue are not particularly super passive i mean they are once you create the thing if you're an artist an author a performer a lot of times you get paid over and over and over again for the same creation that you did the same performance every time my son-in-law did a commercial with his family and every time that commercial aired they got a royalty or some money from that. So royalty on music, royalty on books, royalty on anything is considered passive residual income. So we always are, are seeking sources of residual income. So we talked about that today. Uh, it's a weekend, Saturday here in my neck of the woods. So I've got a lot of fun things planned, a lot of organizational things planned. Still not changing my background, obviously. But uh, 
things in the works. If I can help you in any way, ask about that five minute guarantee. If you don't know what that is, ask what that is or go back and listen to a couple of videos and find where I said it and described it. I don't kind of to the point where I'm not describing it anymore because if you know what it is and you want to take advantage of it, you will. If you don't, You'll have to listen to me for a few times till you figure out what it is and then decide, hey, is that for me or not? Is that something that could help me get over the hurdle or the stuck point that I might feel like I'm in, in especially in business areas or aspects of your life, but can help with other areas and aspects too, because I've been there and done that as well. All right. If I can help you anyway, ask. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow. Have an awesome Saturday.